This podcast is rated E for explicit. Dear love interests, you worked yourself into a tizzy trying to fill a void with a bedroom that's been too busy. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I'm sorry if you're annoyed. But bedrooms with doors wide open are places I try to avoid. Your stocks have dropped right through the floor. Lose my number so I don't have to hit ignore. With more miles on your linens than I have on my car. It's not safe for me to be in bedrooms where you are. Dear love interests, one thing that's for sure, you're not of interest to me anymore. You met me in the midst of many things. Shedding skin, sprout wings, looking at life as a spiritual being through a human lens, having conversations with God about so many things. This show is your invitation. The Poet God is the conversation. A few weeks back, the board and I read an article whose mission it seemed was to convince its readers that open relationships can work. And... Well, did it work? I'm not so sure. But what I am certain of, the board is back for more. Aaron. Can you continuously have sex with other people without that shit invading your current relationship at some point? Calvin. These open relationships are one-sided. There is a certain level of selfishness that starts them. Gary. What they're doing with the other person is not emotionally connected. We're just having a connection to where there's no emotions involved. So we're protecting the love that we have between two of us. And it's just sex with the other person. Yes. Nick, are you allowing or not honoring your own sense of boundaries and your own triggers too for the sake of a relationship? Because then if that is the case, it actually seems very toxic and not loving at all. It sounds like it's time to put that do not disturb sign on your door. Let's get started. Sleeping with other people, how gay men are making open relationships work. Um, One of the lines that really tripped me up was, this is the quote, we get to fulfill our desire of having sex with other people we avoid cheating and the resentment that comes with monogamous relationships when you can't pursue sexual urges <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so much in that side um, <laughs> where should I start with it you know I was having a conversation with um a friend about this topic over the phone and what I said to him was that, you know, I really want to know what they want. Mm. Right. So you're in a relationship, you're having sex, you're both y'all are giving each other the boyfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend experience, whatever it is. What the fuck else do you want? Mm. Mm. And if, 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 if you 
are not getting your needs met some way, somehow in this situation, doesn't there need to have be a conversation that's had about that? Maybe with yourself, maybe are you ready to be Mm -hmm. in a relationship? Are you honest about what your needs are concerning that? And, you know, there are a lot of things that you could call it homework, whatever soul searching that I think is being not that hasn't is, are not being dealt with because they don't want to do the work. Mm. It's easy to say, well, you know what? I'm horny. I'm going to I need to do this instead of are you horny or are you just <laughs> so mm. I mean, the way you described it there was very emotion packed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily what this article is really talking about. Mm-hmm. Because even that first line you read talked about their ability to have sex with other people. Mm. It's not the ability to have emotional relationships with other people. They simply just want to have external sex. Mm. So does that really require you to go through a lot of soul searching about your relationship if you just want to have sex with other people? And I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying that I have an answer to that. Right. That's actually a, a, a question because I'm challenging your assumption that you actually have to be in a mature place for this to work. Which I think brings up a larger topic of what does sex mean to you? Amen. Like, Amen. You're not necessarily discussing the fact that sex can mean two different things to do mm-hmm. to two different people or however many people, honestly. Mm-hmm. And we kind of mentioned this in our last episode, but mm-hmm. again, like, what does this mean? Mm-hmm. What does it right. mean? And why do you need to have sex with other people? Right. Yeah, and I think, I, I, and I, what I'm saying is that in reference to what they were talking about in here is that um, that's, a, those are conversations that I think are not being had. Yeah. You know, um, I remember I met, um, this couple years ago and, and one of them were telling me that in his in his current relationship he he was saying how good it's working for them well mm. because he explained to his partner you either have to excuse infidelity or you make room for it oh shit yeah that's what and and so he got on board with that and they apparently worked out whatever they worked out as far as their rules. And they had a whole thing about, well, don't kiss um, the other person. And, you know, uh, just let me know when you're going. You know, I'll be here. Then I'll be cooked when you get back. Mm. Uh, you know, that kind of setup. And I was just like, it was the first time that I ever heard anybody be so, what you know, explicit about it. I was just, uh, you know, I was like, Wow. I've, I've heard something similar. That one's way more extreme than what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the version that I've heard is that I know you go on your business trips and whatever you do while you're on your business trips is what you do. Don't mm. bring it home. So I, I have a few questions in regards <laughs> to, to, to I still have so many too. <laughs> all of what we're talking about. So, so first is the traditional, viewpoint or perspective of monogamy has that been thrown out of the window in other words you meet somebody you fall in love you two are together for as long as that relationship lasts so that you know that's and and not inviting other people into the relationship is that something that is far out is that a far-fetched uh ideal um in in 2020 so that that's my first question but more so, um, one of the points from the article, and I think Akil alluded to it earlier, was that, you know, you fulfill the desire of of, uh, of having sex with others. But at the same time, what is the the sexual connection, as Nick kind of stated? Like, what is the emotion tied behind that sexual connection? And can you continuously have sex with other people without that shit um, invading your current relationship at some point. I think people try to fool themselves that, that it, they could just compartmentalize. And maybe you can for a certain amount of time. But I think inherently being human, there's only so much compartmentalization you can do, hmm. you know? Then that's why I think these scenarios where, you, where people bring other people in their bedroom to spice up their love life ends up putting too much spices in the pot. <laughs> I, you know, and then nobody can eat the shit. Exactly. <laughs> you, know? you know, that's a, that's a great way of looking at it too. And 
you know, I have a different perspective a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, Aaron asked the point about the traditional, and I think that it's not gone. I mm-hmm. think that it's now more of an option for people. Okay. Um, okay. And the other part is that the. I think that a lot of these situations that I've heard of, and I'm going by the experience that I've heard from other people, is that these open relationships are one-sided. Mm-hmm. There is a certain level of selfishness that starts them, right? Mm. They may ultimately be fine for both people, but it's usually one person who says, I need this. Or, mm-hmm. I want this more than I need this. And then the other person loving them says, wants in, wants and not wanting to lose them. Right. Yes. So, well, I guess it's better than not having you at all. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. And it's, it, but I think it's even more complicated than that. Mm. Because I think that there's a whole value system of, am I going to be comfortable with this? What other options? Do I have, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Because finance is a big thing. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's and I think true. that sometimes we forget that it's part of being in a stable household is having stable finances. Mm -hmm. Which makes me also think of boundaries too, because you were talking about how far do you let someone go or how far do you allow, like in order to maintain or to keep the relationship, are you allowing or not honoring your own sense of boundaries and your own triggers too Mm -hmm. for the sake of, a relationship because then if that is the case it actually seems very toxic and not loving at all yeah because i don't think that's necessarily the case with every couple but i think it's something to consider absolutely and what it's costing you for going along to get along Mm. well we get into some acrimony shit (laughs) you know but I, i do wonder though about uh, the need for sex in relationships and just like just like we talked about before is like what's the value of sex in those relationships why did you get into this relationship anyway right Mm -hmm. what was the purpose of getting into that relationship and how does this open relationship continue with that you know Mm -hmm. what what is this fixing something that was broken or is this a new introduction of something that was missing i i don't understand and that's where where I'm, i'm just wondering why would you get into a relationship having a certain set of expectations and then come somehow along the way you find out that oh no i need to add some other person i think a lot of times and this is what i've been thinking this kind of overarching thought about the whole thing um is i'm wondering right and maybe my thinking is too narrow on it but i'm wondering that um is it a a, a deter a, a detour from dealing with other issues that you you don't want to deal with, yeah. right? Um, whether it's between you and that person, or you and yourself, uh, and it's easy, um, perhaps, to just do that. Hmm. You know, go f- get quote unquote fulfillment in somebody else that you don't have such complicated a history with, mm. and that doesn't um, uh, store you in the way that this person does because mm. of that complicated history mm. um and 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 also that mirror that they've become to you Ooh, because of that complicated history and the things that that they are helping you to get to see in yourself that you need to work on that you don't want to work on so you go and deal with somebody who's unfamiliar and therefore you don't have to see them and you also don't have to see yourself come on bishop so that's what's part of what i'm i'm thinking but it seems like such an minimization mm-hmm. of the quote unquote need that you want to get fulfilled because the other person is assuming the other person is capable of having sex with you the one that you're in relationships with so is it just about sex mm. so you see why I had such a problem with this article <laughs> the way they premise it is mm-hmm. so much about sex without really talking about the fact that this is a complicated emotional puzzle we're dealing with here right? mm-hmm. and for some people being in an open relationship helps right it might actually fix some things but you still have to ask the question as to why yeah. what are we doing what's missing mm-hmm. all that same emotional stuff you're talking about and i do think that for some people it really will be about i am just attracted to other people and i want it right well that and then you have to deal with the 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 point of yes Okay, you want to have sex with that person, but what does that mean now? Do mm-hmm. <sighs> you just upset me? Uh, <laughs> you just upset me because if somebody told me some shit like what you just said, <laughs> like somebody in a relationship like, with wait, wait, right, right. So you right. just told you just 
Okay. I'm going to just need a minute. <laughs> okay, so you see what happened to me when we first started no, talking about adding this concept you know into what, what we we're going to talk about? Is that I was stuck, too. Because you imagine, though, you, you imagine somebody that you've been in a relationship with for five years saying, you know, I love you, babe, but, um, you know, I just want to have sex with somebody else. Excuse me? You just want to? You just like, want just cause, Just because you want just to, because that you, means that you should, or that you need to, or that... It ha- can, can I add some color to that, too? Go ahead. Please. Feel it. <laughs> Babe, I know we've been together for five years. Oh, already. Right, and you oh. kind of let yourself go a little bit. Um, so... <laughs> I want to explore some other options. Please, Nick. Please, please go ahead. Please, Nick. All I did was take his. I took the scenario and reverted it. Any opportunity for you to work on that shit, or for you to like, for me to hear it and process it, and then feel like you just have already made a decision that this is what without communicating to me, up like, hey, I want to work on this. I'm interested in this. Is why this is important to me. You know, on that whole let yourself go thing. You know, I I know somebody who who. Is you know stepping out on his wife probably as we speak, and I had a, <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn. No, and I had a and he, and you know what I, I he we talked about him coming on the podcast anonymously to talk about it, but I asked him why are you what's wh- why why are you cheating on on your wife? He tells me that I told her that she needs to lose about twenty thirty pounds. And she said, I'm good. Did she have babies? Mm-hmm. I think they have um, two daughters or something. <sighs> and he, and she, he said, she said, I'm good. And he, he said he got tired of talking to her about her weight and all that. So he, he was like, I got to get my needs met and you can't meet them anymore. So do we introduce the fact that Planet Fitness is enrolling for nine ninety nine down? <laughs> Yeah. And nine ninety nine a month, but you know that's that's one side of it. But he just said she was like, "I'm good." No, she said, "I am good." Right, right. and that's what I'm saying. I am good, and he that's well, his that, issue, obviously. Right, right, and, and and I understand what you're trying to get at, but what what he just described is somebody who is confident in herself and right. saying to the other person. What's wrong with you? No, I'm I'm really being facetious. Well, I know, but I, 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 for some people, that's going to be necessary. Mm-hmm. So repeat that commercial later. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but 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 I do think that that this is one of those situations that I don't want to gloss over the fact that this is yeah. a challenge with somebody who's comfortable with who they are in their skin, mm. and the other person wants them to be something else. Mm. Well, and that. And then that becomes their work to do on why right. they feel uncomfortable. Like that's not my shit. Mm-hmm. Right. You, that you get to then put on me. No, like I think it's a conversation. But mm, I'm and he, he, he did say that she was upset when he he came to have that conversation with her. So I could only imagine how he approached that conversation, and her probably responding to the way uh, she responded to him was probably in reason like fuck you. Like, you know, that's I'm sure she who what woman wouldn't be. Well, and I asked a question about her having kids mm-hmm. because I mean, you you think about it. And again, I really was just joking about the plan of fitness thing. <laughs> but <laughs> but but you're asking this person to change who they are after they've given birth to your kids. Like, to me that that shit is just I, I can't even I, I can't fathom it. I really can't. Does anybody know the way the female anatomy works once you right. have children? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm not saying that I disagree with that. And I feel like that shouldn't even matter, honestly. Right. Like, why is it then, okay, well, have you had kids? And now it's quote unquote acceptable. Like, it's approvable. It's okay, you had kids, so we can. Un- like, no, that woman is in charge of her own body. And if that's her body's in a space where she feels happy and whole and complete, that is absolutely 100% her choice. Child, no child. Whatever. That's a good point. Very mm-hmm. good point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well I mean, said. Um, one of the things that, that, you know, we all have to deal with as, you know, uh, Mother Nature sets in, as age sets in, is the idea that we're not always going to have these great bodies. We're, we're not. We're not always going to look the way in which we looked maybe 10, 5, 10 years ago. So... Do are we falling in love with the person? Or are we falling in love with the idea of the individual? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And you know, um, and 
I, some reading I was doing uh, last week about experiences of love, one of the things that I, I came across that I thought was so brilliant was this whole idea of you as an individual have to evolve in order yes. to experience yes. different experiences of love or deeper experiences of love. And and that's one of the things also that I was thinking about when I was reading this article. Um, you know, the, the, the people involved, and of course, this is different, you know, and on a case by case basis, but as an overarching idea, I was wondering how many people are again really what they want is a deeper experience of love that they're not getting with the individual and they think they're gonna find it in somebody else's pants mm, 80 you know? 20 honey 80 20 yeah is, is it that is that what they're really looking for a deeper experience of love that they're not and, and if that's the case you're, you're not gonna find it that way you know you're not gonna get it that way um perhaps you have to become more yourself mm. to find the more that you're looking for that the thing that you're chasing is actually something that you need to explore within and it's not going to be in another pair of pants in the last few episodes we talked a lot about love in its many forms and facets according to the ancient greeks there are eight types of love and as we go to break we'll leave you with ludus a playful type of love It is the feeling of infatuation in the early days of romance. If you've ever been in love, you know Ludus all too well. We'll be right back after these messages. We live in a world today where self-work is not... It's not comfortable. It's not. Um, it's not. Um, people don't like to, like to do it. Meaning that that's not something that people want to do today. It's hard um, work mm-hmm. because everything's so instant. Everything is so self gratifying instantaneously. You don't have to do it because you can get whatever you want without having to do it. So why do I have to do it if I'm getting self gratified by doing other things? Mm-hmm. So in their mind, they're getting fulfilled, even if they have to repeat it over and over and over, and to get that fulfillment. But you're not doing any work on yourself personally to fix the problem that's causing you to go through this over and over. So, mm. what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. The um, psychotherapist that they interviewed for the article had said that, he said, I think. It is a difficult pill to swallow that we cannot be all things to our partners. I think he was kind of coming from the idea of, uh, of well, supporting the, the general idea that mon- monogamous, um, or sorry, that open relationships uh, can work. Yeah, and I think that that's a cop out. I I, agree. I, I totally think it's a cop out because it, it to I me, agree. but you're, you're what you're saying is that instead of actually dealing with the fact that you committed to this person Mm -hmm. here's an out for you here's an out for Mm -hmm. you and also um the other part of it for me is that uh who says that you need your partner to be all things you need to be some things to your fucking self oh how about that you be some shit for you that 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 doesn't uh you know um have anything to do with what they give you do some shit for yourself be whole when you come in, right, so that they don't have to complete you. Mm. Saturday don't service. Get me started. Saturday <laughs> service. <laughs> because that is approaching it from like a deficit, like oh, yes. I need some shit. That's I how need I it. Like, it. and no, like, versus I'm coming full, boo. Like <laughs> we meeting in the middle here, but like I'm not yeah. like at a deficit to where I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. you do know, this like, for me, yeah. please yeah. make me feel better. Yeah. Please yeah. make me feel whole. Please make me feel. You know, doing all these things that nobody can ever do for you. Yeah. And and then when they when you find out that they can't do for you, then you go somewhere else to ask somebody else to do for you. Or it's doing stuff for you that you're not even do for yourself. <laughs> Preach. But that. But one thing that we're we're chatting about here about going off is that this is these are open relationships. These aren't like I'm just cheating. These are defined relationships mm-hmm. that have openings. And so all of those things are allowed what depending on your rules. But my question is, is your relationship strong enough 
on its own that it could survive without it being mm. mm-hmm. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, That's a good point right there. Is it strong enough? Yeah. Is it strong enough? Or does your relationship need outside influences to make it stronger? Right. Mm. A crutch? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason that brought it, because this this, this quote from this article, Mm -hmm. I I don't know what to think of this quote. And I'm being judgmental because I think, like I said, there's a whole bunch of cop-outs here. Right. But they're talking about the rules of their open relationship. And they say they're built to protect the love of our relationship. And I don't understand how that's possible. Mm Mm-hmm. Because it's transactional, because they feel that what they're doing with the other person is not emotionally connected. We're just having a connection so there's no emotions involved. So we're protecting the love that we have between two of us. And it's just sex with the other person. Yes. Mm. So we're allowing that part to be satisfied by protecting the love that we have. So if... Okay, if that's if, a great explanation. If, I, didn't, I didn't read it that way, but that makes me understand what, what that line means. More. Okay. So you're using the other person to protect your love until one of y'all broke rules with the other person. Then the thing that you're using to protect you is the thing that's going to fuck you up. <laughs> that's a possibility, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't necessarily because mean it's going to happen. In the article, yes. somebody s- s- talked about um, what it was. It was a thing where they were messing around and they didn't follow the rules. Mm-hmm. Somebody kissed somebody or did something that wasn't under rules. And then it caused problems. So you asked, are they doomed to from the start? <laughs> is that is that your way of kind of underscoring that they actually are? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's so inherently flawed yeah. that you know. So I'll be devil's advocate. So if if both if people are agreeing that this is a way they want to have a relationship, who are they hurting? Who 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 is being hurt? If if they're agreeing, as you said, they're not, nobody's cheating. Nobody's, they're both agreeing. They're both aware of what's happening. Who is being hurt by this relationship? To kind of twist a, a, a statement that um, Nick made in the last show. Like, listen, if you want to go out on a sinking ship, make sure you have somebody <laughs> with the same mentality as you who want to take that voyage with you so that when y'all start sinking in the middle of the ocean, y'all together, y'all, you, you know, y'all, y'all good. Ain't no life jackets. <laughs> <laughs> they have each other. Not Jack yeah, Rose. Exactly. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I think that's a, I think that, that, that Gary makes a great point is mm-hmm. that, that if this is something that you can make work and you are actually equally invested in making it work, go for it. Great. Do it for you. More power to you. But, but I would just caution that you but definitely as need for to me myself and mm. yeah. But communication is important. So Our if you're house constantly communicating. Well, sir. Yeah. <laughs> hey. but see, that's part of the, I think a lot of these situations too, when we we think about these situations too, a lot of times we bring our personal feelings into the two, and we 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 think about this can't even I can't even comprehend doing this. So we're not thinking about the person who's already have that mindset of. They're making it work because for you, you're definitely saying it's not going to work at all. I'm not even thinking that there's a possibility in my relationship, but they're agreeing that this is what we want and we're going to make this work. Mm. But by us having our own personal biases of mm-hmm. where the relationship starts and ends, it's hard to conceive that that can even work in reality for somebody else. Because I've never seen it. Mm. Really. Yeah. Work, but but still, you can't negate the point. Is mm-hmm. that you're still coming with your own bias? Absolutely, and, and so it's based your off system, of yeah, your value system may not necessarily align with theirs. Yes, I, I will concede to that. It's based off of my bias, but it's also based off of what I've seen. That's true. Also, and let, let's not forget this point. Um, and you know, we were talking about before we came on air. We were talking about uh, stigmas and stereotypes and things of that nature. Gay men have a huge stigma of promiscuity and and infidelity. So when we're talking about open relationships, we're basically saying that gay men can get into a relationship, but they're going to cheat or they're going they're allowed to um, have random hookups as almost as if they were doing the same thing if they were single. So it's the same mentality Mm -hmm. that society has of, of the overall perception of gay men. A lot of us 
don't have models Mm -hmm. for what a successful, you know, loving relationship, even between two men, two women, whatever. um, We don't have enough Mm. of those. You know, Um, it's been so demonized by society at large in general that, you know, that's another conversation, but um, something to aspire to uh, and, you know, not look down upon. Um, And so that I think that's part of it, too, because that has to be, you know, in somebody's kind of spirit and mind when they go into a situation or what they believe it could be. And if you're already coming into it and you already have uh, thought of it that we could only be this, you know, Um, and and this is this is another thing, I think, when it comes to compatibility um, what you believe and what you feel and what you want for yourself, it's important that the other person that you're trying to date also has that belief in that uh, because mm. y'all are un- only going to go as far as you believe you can, you know, to- together. And to that point, you know, what Aaron said earlier about gay men having this, you know, uh, stereotype of being promiscuous or whatever. Mm-hmm. It is sad for me that people go into that thinking they can only do it as an open relationship because otherwise it won't work. See that because mm-hmm. you're gonna cheat anyway, no, right? No, no. It is so mm-hmm. sad to me that that is the expectation, yeah, rather than the expectation. And is that why it's forty yeah, percent? Yeah, I, I yeah. would I would say yes. Yeah, is that 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 there's a fear that you're gonna get in a relationship that's not going to work if it's monogamous. And and so one of the uh, mm. quotes in the article was somebody. That's a good the, point. The the couple was making a, a statement that we are tired of basically being looked down upon yeah. by straight couples and other gay mm-hmm. couples about the way we choose to um, engage in our relationship. But to what you're saying, that makes me think of again, what are these unsaid beliefs um, causing us to create? Causing us, causing the type of life that we, you know, are informing the type of life that we create. These things that we, we're not speaking to. And if that's what it is, then that, that makes a lot of sense to me. That That's why you would set up your life that way. You would fix your bed in a way that you can't even live in it and lay in it mm. for the whole night. That you have to step out of it for a little while uh, because you don't believe I'm gonna that go it get could some water. be. <laughs> yeah, that you you don't believe that you could you could sit in that bed and be fulfilled in it with the person that you've chosen that you set up your life in a way that you got to step out. Yeah, and if that hasn't been modeled to you or modeled for you or you haven't seen any representation of that to know that that is possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like you at the bottom of it, it still comes back down to the individual what they believe, and based off of that belief is how they set up their life. So why? Yeah. Are forty percent of gay men setting up their lives that way, and have they really gotten to the? Have they done the work within themselves mm-hmm. to get to the bottom of what's unsaid, unspoken to beliefs that may have be causing them to to you know to to think that this is all that that's possible for them? Right, but then I honestly have a little more compassion there because mm-hmm. um, I feel like we can start to judge people for those decisions. But mm-hmm. like, it's not easy being a gay man it's in twenty twenty. Like, that is a marginalized identity. There's mm-hmm. a lot of oppression that comes from that, and I think people try to manage or deal with that the mm-hmm. best way that they can. Is it always the healthiest way? No. no. Is it always right. the safest way? No. But sometimes it's just the way that they know how to deal or manage mm-hmm. the stress of being gay in 2020 like it's right. hard shit yeah and yes. so i actually think we could be kinder with each other as a community mm-hmm. about how we navigate trying to do the best that we know how to do with mm-hmm. what we have like we're all trying to figure this thing out mm-hmm. and yeah. if i'm demonizing you or judging you and saying well you wrong you that's wrong no like that's my own lens you right. gotta figure out what works for you right. and who am i to say that you being where you are on your journey mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That that there's something wrong with that. This is where your journey is. I want to honor that. Right. And that's so, important. Yeah. 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 That yeah. that's important. Thank you for saying that. That's to, important. To, and I think that you're one of the more enlightened ones. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I don't feel like a lot of people care about the other people in their community that same way. Absolutely. Well, that's true too. To to that's echo um, a lot of what Nick is saying and to answer hopefully answer your question, Akil. Um, so the article talks about shame and guilt Mm -hmm. as components for the decisions that we actually make. Mm -hmm. But it also talks about this, this major thing that I want to discuss a little bit is the fear of intimacy. 
and uh, having a close connection. Also, the fear of abandonment. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in all transparency, uh, I just lost my dad in November, but uh, he had left prior to um, me losing him uh, physically. So throughout my journey as, as, a, as a gay black man, I have dealt with the fear of being abandoned mm. and a fear of uh, being close to people. Mm. Um, so much so that I would have settled for probably, er, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier in my, in my thirties, I would probably have settled for an open relationship based on the idea that I wouldn't have to commit as much energy, as much time, as much effort uh, in order to hold on to someone as I would if I were in a monogamous relationship where I had to put in 100% trust, 100% fidelity, 100% Mm. communication. And was that a a recognition that you didn't have it? To put in? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. It's like a damn mirror, as you said earlier. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, w- I was just going to give another kind of example because we're, since we're talking about full disclosure here, mm. I had a relationship in my early 30s that was, I thought, um, ill-timed, let's put it that way. And it was also something that the other person obviously did not want, but they wanted to please me, right? Mm. And my suggestion was, since I'm constantly catching you with other people, Mm. why don't we just say that we're each other's number one and we'll just continue to date that way? We won't be a couple, but we'll be primary. That didn't work (laughs) because the first person I dated became an issue. Mm. And so being clear about that and saying, yes, we agree doesn't always mean it's going to work out. So you do have to actually pay attention to what the other person really, really wants and what they need. That particular person was the selfish type. It was all about what he wanted. It had nothing to do with me at all. I was just another option. If you've ever had a stalker or a partner that wouldn't let go, you've already met Mania a dark type of love. It is obsessive. It's the kind of love that can lead someone into jealousy, anger, or madness. That's because the balance between Eros, a sexual love, and Ludus, a playful love, is terribly off. We'll be right back after these messages. Hey guys, I'm Joseph, a member of the board, which is what Akio refers to as his community of friends and supporters. We all have something valuable to give, and sometimes it's as simple as giving someone else a reason to live. On behalf of all the board members, I want to thank you for listening to our podcast. Akio's success is our success, and we want you to be a part of the community we are building. It's not enough. It's not enough. Because you are the very foundation we must build it on. It's not enough to tell people that they matter. We have to show them. Like my friends showed me. So tell a friend, leave a review, and keep in touch. We want to hear from you. Because it all matters. Just as you do. I will say though this brings up attachment styles too yes and if we've like talked a lot about that I think this would be a great episode of Keel <laughs> but <laughs> like talking about attachment styles is you've got like avoidant people you've got anxious people but it has to do with like honestly your upbringing and you having what was called a secure base so mm-hmm. someone who you could explore safely with but you knew was there for you like if you needed someone like you could turn back and 
kind of have that person there, you knew that it was safe, um, but also it gave you the freedom to explore in your childhood. And so based on like your early attachment relationships, psychology says that that impacts the ways that you show up in relationships as an yes, adult. Sir. So you could be avoiding kind of similar to what you were talking about mm-hmm. um, with you actually feeling comfortable with some distance or with... That's an attachment style versus that. Actually, for me, historically, I've been a little bit more anxious, but that's because my Mm -hmm. dad was never really there. So I, yeah, but I think that's an interesting topic. But your attachment style and your early, early life and childhood experiences, how those continue to play out in your adult relationships. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Just FYI, mine is dismissive avoidant. Oh. Yes, yes. Look at all these psychology people (laughs) over here. (laughs) (laughs) Mm, mm, mm. (laughs) There's certain things that you need to to, to go through. There's certain experiences that you need to have. And you shouldn't be judged for where you are on your journey and what that experience is. Um, is 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 teaching you because what that experience is teaching you is valuable, and so if it is a situation that you find yourself in for whatever reason where you're in a, an open relationship and you that's something that you're choosing to actively make work for whatever your reasons are, maybe that's an experience that you need to have regardless of whether it works, how long it works, whatever. But just getting the lessons from that. And what it might teach you about yourself uh, may help inform something that may be healthier for you down the road if that doesn't end up being, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And I agree. I think that, you know, you, you kind of have to define for yourself what the boundaries are, have a clear communication. And if really, if this is something that you think is going to make your relationship stronger, why not go for it? Give it a try. Mm-hmm. Because if that means... If not doing it means that there is no relationship, then maybe you should give it a try. But you had said something earlier um, about asking that question about whether your relationship is strong enough to survive um, being uh, without it without being open. without it yeah. being open. Yeah. And Nick said something, you know, in our last podcast about, you know, your own personal value systems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really, nobody can decide this for you mm-hmm. on your own. You have to consult your own values. Mm-hmm. And just like he said before, just a little while ago, too. Where are you on your own journey? Right. To, to also, before you go to, to that, that point about if your relationship is strong enough um, to ask that question, at least to ask that question. If your relationship is strong enough to remain closed, you open it. Um, what does that mean then that you would open it and what would be the purpose and the reason and behind that? What are you looking for that you think may heal that or remedy that? Those are questions that should be questions and conversations that should be had. I was going to say in thinking about that, that literally takes radical honesty. Mm. Yeah. 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 Radical honesty, because there is so much fear that navigates so many of the decisions that we make and honestly blinds us to so much of what's happening in our internal experience Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. moving past that, the only way to do that is with literally radical honesty with yourself first Mm -hmm. and then to the world around you. Yeah. You just reminded me that this is a very evolved conversation that we're <laughs> definitely <laughs> that we're having because it's easy to forget that in this circle, right? That listen. <laughs> well, and and so to to both of your points, I'm I'm very curious about this. If we come from a foundation that is shaky, uh, especially if we haven't had those role models to to your point, Nick, uh, or we haven't had people that we look up to that we can emulate in terms of um, loving relationships, how do we go into a relationship and want to bring someone else into it when we haven't healed or done the necessary work? to repair from our quote unquote upbringing. Like, how do we do that? How do we think that an outside person, whether it's physical or non-physical can assist us with repairing or healing when we haven't done the work? Mm -hmm. But then I think too, because it could be whose baggage 
plays I don't I, not to say this lightly but at whose baggage kind of works a little better together versus <laughs> <laughs> whose does it some people's bag it clash and like you cannot find like it just doesn't work mm-hmm. some people you your baggage is complimentary <laughs> in some ways and it like you can navigate or you mm-hmm. can have conversation and it's a different relationship and you may not have healed mm-hmm. necessarily in the place of your baggage and mm. you got to find somebody who you y'all shit complimentary like right. sure. yes, you're sir. not tricking because all of my shit like <laughs> yeah we can't do that boo like because right. I don't know that healing is ever a destination okay. I don't know that it ever ends or that you okay. just get to a place where you are evolved and you don't stop evolving and so I'm like mm. okay if this is a process yeah. and this is a journey then how does that shift my approach to this yeah and there's, mm. there's a whole quote about saying that you know the whole idea is not trying to find some perfect person it's finding the perfect person for you, you. amen amen right because nobody's perfect but there is somebody the idea of it that is somebody who's imperfect and in their imperfection is perfect for you. Mm. Mm. That's a word. I'm Akil Johnson, the poet god. Thank you for listening.